Chinese researchers have been working at a frenzied pace to develop battery technology in order to take over the world, to take over the battery market, to take over the electronics market, and to take over the car market. China's government is sponsoring a lot of this, these efforts. It can see the writing on the wall. It can see the fact that China dominates the electric car market, and it wants to win. And as part of this, companies are working feverishly to develop next generation battery technology. Now, I've talked about how CATL have just revealed their 500 watt per kilo energy density condenser battery. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. However, this is nothing in comparison to what these researchers have just developed. A battery with 711 watts per kilo of energy density, which may actually be the most energy dense battery in history that is not based on solid state expensive and as yet unproven technology. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Chinese researchers have announced a 711 watts per kilo lithium battery, which is mind blowing. This is the kind of battery pack that will easily power electric airplanes, even large commercial airliners. Yep. 711 watts per kilo is definitely enough to make them commercially viable. In fact, it would actually make them cheaper to run by far than a gasoline powered airplane. Doesn't matter what the size or shape. Lithium ion batteries today struggle to reach an energy density of 300 watts per kilo. That's too low for the long range electric vehicles that drivers want. It's too low to electrify airplanes and other things like that. In a recent issue of Chinese physics letters, Researchers Quan Li, Yang Yang, Yi Quan Yu, and Hong Li of the Institute of Physics at the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing said they have manufactured a practical pouch type rechargeable lithium ion battery by using an ultra thick high discharge capacity cathode with an A real capacity exceeding 700 watts per kilo and a lithium metal anode. Now, Clean Tactics says, the high charge discharge voltage of the lithium rich manganese based oxides allows for a higher lithium ion storage capacity the research say now manganese in batteries also allows you to have be able to use less lithium making the batteries cheaper so these batteries whilst having incredible energy density might actually become affordable the anode electrode employs ultra thin metal lithium incorporated using a separator coating technique, which addresses the annoying issue of reversible deposition of ultra thin lithium of large surface capacity, said the researchers. The devices boast a gravimetric energy density of 711.3 watts per kilo and a volumetric energy density of 1,653.65 watts per liter, both of which are the highest in lithium rechargeable batteries on the intercalation type cathode, Lee says. In other words, commercially logical, practical batteries. With respect to the battery manufacturer, our extremity battery structure design using ultra thin current collectors was tailored to minimize the usage of auxiliary materials while enhancing the proportion of active materials in the entire battery, he says. The synergistic approach is what enabled the ultra high energy density of the batteries. In the abstract for the research paper, the scientists said, High energy density rechargeable lithium batteries are being pursued by researchers because of their revolutionary potential nature. Current advanced practical lithium ion batteries have an energy density of around 300 watts per kilo. Continuing to increase the energy density of batteries to a higher level will lead to a major explosion of development in many fields such as electric aviation. Here we have manufactured practical pouch type rechargeable lithium batteries with a gravimetric energy density of 711.3 watts per kilo and volumetric of 1,653 watts per liter. Now these new devices, say Clean Technica, could benefit long range electric vehicles and electric aviation, both of which put massive demands on weight versus energy density. What I mean by that? Well, if you think about it, with a car, if you simply double the size of the battery pack, you do not double the range. Increasing the weight has a massively detrimental effect on range. So if you have, say, for example, a 50 kilowatt hour battery in your car, and say it gets you 400 kilometers of range, by simply adding another 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, you don't double the range. What you need is a higher energy density battery pack in order to get these 
kinds of results in cars that people want, which are, say, pickup trucks with 600 miles of range, and therefore the ability to do long distance towing. Here's what the company said. This offers insights into how to balance safety and other important factors in high energy density batteries, which will help in the practical realization of high energy density batteries into the future. Research on batteries with energy densities approaching theoretical limits will improve our knowledge of solid state ionics and solid state electrochemistry, allowing perhaps for technological innovation in new materials and battery systems. Then the experts explain that a trade-off always exists between energy density cycle performance rate capability, and the safety of lithium-ion batteries. There is a bit of a trade-off here as well. If a battery is more energy dense, then sometimes it is actually more prone to catching fire. Now they say that elevated energy density will increase the risk during battery operation. Energy density must be gradually improved while ensuring safety, says Lee. Our goal is to enhance battery safety performance through solid state battery technology, making high energy density batteries more practical. The other thing to consider is cycle life. How long will your battery actually last for? I mean, do you want a car that will give you a thousand kilometers or 600 miles of range, which will only last you 10 years? Well, probably not. The cycle performance of high energy density batteries lags behind that of currently commercialized batteries, they say. This parameter needs to be comprehensively considered to meet the requirements of specific fields. It will therefore take considerable time for ultra high energy density batteries to be practically applied. Addressing the challenges that hinder their practical usage will be the direction the researchers will pursue in the future. So what that means is the researchers right now are working on getting these batteries to have as long of a life as possible. Now remember, this the world's efforts towards higher energy density batteries are actually working. The energy density of batteries has continued to increase every single year for the last 30 years. That won't change. So even though these batteries may not be in an aircraft next year, at some point in time, batteries with this energy density, if not these ones, will almost certainly exist at a commercial scale. What I mean by that is they'll be adopted by the automotive industry, by almost every industry in the world. Remember, every company is striving for more battery life, whether that be in your iPhone or phone, or that be in your portable electronics device of some kind, Automakers are no different. Battery companies are no different. And they constantly, in, and the amount of money being spended and invested into increasing the energy density of batteries is increasing massively every year. With this massive increase in spend, what that means is that inevitably batteries will continue to improve. And by the time we get to 2030, I believe you'll find that most cars available in the Western markets will have an option of a model with 600 plus miles of range. What that means is that the time between discoveries in the lab and commercial production is getting shorter as well. Now, NEO, electric car company NEO, have claimed that they will have an EV on the market this year with batteries with an energy density of 360 watts per kilo. Next year, we'll probably see CATL condenser batteries in a range of different electric cars, enabling well over 600 miles of range. This is really good news because affordable batteries using sodium are getting cheaper. All lithium ion phosphate, both of them are coming down in price. What this means though, is that buyers will have a choice. They can buy a cheaper EV using either lithium ion phosphate or sodium batteries, or they can pay more and get a more advanced battery pack, giving them massive range. We'll get to the point where the naysayers will not be able to say, how much range does your EV have? Because in almost all cases, EVs will have more range than their comparable gasoline-powered vehicle. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching.